So moving right along to the hi-hats. Um, and like I said, the hi-hats are, are very important. They drive the song. So let's actually take a deeper look into exactly what I did on the hi-hats. Um, real basic. Um, rolled off some low-end hi-hats. You tend to want to just want that crispy, cracking thing. So we roll off the low-end a little bit. Um, here with uh, the Q10 EQ. Uh, roll off the low-end again. Uh, I like visual EQs sometimes when you're rolling things off. Just because you can kind of see. And you can just kind of pick your spot and roll. And then, for a little added bonus, for a little added crispiness, my good friend, the Precision EQ, made by UAD, 27K, boosted the frequency all the way up and just boosted it. And this one, I, I went kind of aggressive on the frequency. I went up about 4 dB on that frequency, and it adds just that crispy top. And let's, let's A, B it. Um, so that's without, and that's with. It's a very subtle uh, difference. It's not a drastic difference. It just adds a nice little crispiness to the top of that hi-hat. That hi-hat in particular doesn't have a whole lot of very top-end information, so it's, it's just, uh, just adding a little crispiness to it. The piano, this was, um, this setting right here was the result of a note um, that I got back. This wasn't in the original when I sent the mix. When I sent the mix, I had it dry. I didn't have anything on it. And then uh, Craig Kalman called back, and one of his notes was he just wanted the piano to feel a little more aggressive, a little more in your face. He wanted some more high end. He wanted to feel it just cut through a little bit. And so he said, you know, just be subtle. Don't go too crazy. But he said, give me some attack. Give me some high end. Give me, you know, just make it bite me a little more is the term that he used. And again, um, one of the things you do when you're mixing records and you're dealing with the people who are going to approve the record is you, you figure out their language. You, you learn to develop a language with them. So Craig, you know, he's the top dog. He's the head of Atlantic Records. So and he's very involved in Cardi's uh, album and her, you know, the subsequent singles. He's really invested in her and her, her project, so he's always, like, getting in there with notes. And so when he said, you know, just make it bite a little more. Bite to him means a little aggressive on the high end. And so as you can see on this EQ, I'll play before and then I'll unmute it, and you can, you can hear the difference. We bite down a little more. It's a, it's a lot more top end. You hear the delay a little better when it when when that EQ is on. And so that EQ was a result of his notes and him wanting to feel a little more aggressive. And as soon as I did that and I sent it back, he was like, "Yes, that's it. Don't touch it." You know, he he we got to what he wanted in one try. So a lot of times, again, it's about understanding that language so that this doesn't become a drawn out process. When you take the time to get to know your clients and know what they're talking about and develop a language. When they call back with a note, you can address it right away. And you don't have to spend all day going back and forth and sending multiple passes. I knew what he meant. I gave it to him, sent it back, and he was like, yes, that's it. Don't touch it. Um, so that's pretty much uh, where that EQ came from with the piano. And the money sample, let's go into that. We get down to there. And... First thing, roll off a little low end. Not as drastic as I did with the hats or the other stuff. Um, second thing, we the C1 compressor was on there. Um, this is something that Evan put on there. This wouldn't be my tool of choice, but I left it on there because it was the sound that she was hearing as she recorded. Again, if it's not broke, you don't have to fix it. So I don't have to go in and change things based on what I like. This is not my compressor of choice. But that doesn't mean I can't honor the fact that this is what he chose. It's doing the job. Let's move on. Part of the name of the game is efficiency. And, and, and one of the reasons I came up in this industry is being efficient. Knowing how, knowing what to spend time on and what not to spend time on is what I think also adds to being a good mix engineer. Because I've seen mixers spend eight hours on just drums. That would drive me insane to spend that much time on just drums. And so for the world that we work in and how demanding things are and how people want things done so quickly, 
that's just not an efficient way to work. You wouldn't get a lot of work, you know, spending eight hours on drums. And a lot of guys, you know, I've had older guys, guys who I've looked up to, come to me and say, man, how are you guys getting work? How are you young guys keeping your careers going? How are you staying in the game and staying relevant? And what we have to realize is, even though we're good at our craft and we've developed a, a way of how to, how to uh, mix records and the craft of it, you also have to stay up with technology. You have to stay up with methods. You can't always just revert to the way you used to do things. You'll get left behind because if it takes you eight hours to do something that it only takes a brand new engineer a half hour to do and his sound just as good as yours, they're going to go with the, the one who can do it in a half hour. So efficiency is important. Learning how to condense your process. Figure out your process. Condense your process. In this day and age, I don't feel like there's any reason to spend eight hours on drums. They come from an 808 machine. They all kind of have the same qualities and sounds. And it's about getting in there, being effective, moving on. So same principle here. Evan, you know, he has this compressor. Not my compressor of choice, but I don't want to waste time sitting around going, well, he used this compressor, let me use my compressor, and then I got to get my settings to match his settings, and then Cardi may notice and be like, ah, it just doesn't sound the same. And then we just wasted a whole lot of back and forth for no reason. I could just use Evan's compressor and keep it moving. So it's about learning how to be efficient and not making everything a problem. Oh, and this particular frequency was getting on my nerves with this money. money. And here's what I tend to do. This is a good um, thing to show this example. Um, one of the things I do, I do this with vocals a lot. I do this with sounds that tend to have high end or high mids. I would use the EQ7, basic EQ. Usually what I'll do is, money. I know that sound, something about that sound instinctively bothered me. So I'll push the frequency all the way up. I'll narrow down the bell curve so that it's net to the notches, narrowest point, and then I turn the speakers down. This step is very important because you will blow your speakers. Turn the speakers down, and then I sweep across the frequencies and as I play the sound. So let's, um, let's select this. Money, 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 money. And then what I do is... As I sweep the sound, I'm trying to find the most annoying, awful frequency possible. Money, 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 money. If you notice, it's creating a little bit of a ring of a frequency money, money, money. that I really don't care for. So now that I've found it, then I dip it. So instead of going all the way up, we come all the way down and then work our way back to where it starts to sound normal. So it start, I'll start it up, I'll dip it all the way down so you can kind of see what it sounds without that, and then you'll see why it's important to sweep for those frequencies. And then this is what it sounds like with nothing on it, with me not taking that frequency out. Money, 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 money. Now, I didn't want it to be that drastic because then the other problem is it can tend to sound hollow. And if you, if you duck one specific frequency out too much, you can tend to make the sound sound too hollow. So I decided to kind of, you know, meet it halfway, so to speak. And so now I can actually just select that till we get, oh, I, I was right on the frequency too. Um, and then we just go back up a little. Um, and that's what I did there. I just wanted to notch out that little frequency a little bit, not all the way down, because it was a very annoying frequency. And I wanted to make sure I notched it out just a little bit. And then from there, we got, we got our track. Money. All I really wanna see is the, Money. I don't really need a D, I need the. And then again, it's all downhill from there. Once I get the track sounding how I like, vocal sounding how I like, 
I just marry the two. I just do vocal rides and figure out what parts of the turnarounds in the music is messing with the level of the vocal, that kind of thing. And then it's kind of, kind of pretty smooth sailing from there.